electdrive.com. Industry service for electric mobility. We're here at the Hanover Trade Fair 2016 and with us is uh, Markus Bachmeier, head of the German company or head of hydrogen solutions at the German company Linde, one of the leading gases and engineering companies and the leader in terms of hydrogen infrastructure. So I'm assuming you have a very positive outlook when it comes to the future of fuel cell technology. Fully positive. The e-mobility sector has a saying that says the fuel cell will be here in five years' time. Has anything changed in 2016? Yes, definitely so. Uh, I think that sentence has been right in 2010, 2011. Uh, but now you can buy these cars. Uh, you can buy Toyota cars. You can buy Hyundai cars. Uh, you'll soon be able, over here in Europe as well, to buy Honda cars. And I expect some, some more car companies to bring product in the next year the year after next year. So we'll see many more of these and that saying, I think, should now go down in history. And how far have you as a company gotten in terms of uh, setting up infrastructure here in Germany? So we are, um, we've been active in building those fueling stations for, for a couple of years. Uh, we've seen that it's um, quite a challenge to build those stations because they are technically, technically quite complex. Uh, but now I think uh, it's been managed. And now the next big challenge is really to build a comprehensive network. And that's where we've teamed up with other partners. We are a member of the Clean Energy Partnership. Uh, we are also one of the investors in H2 Mobility. Uh, we now have all together, together with the partners, 20 stations in Germany, which translates into uh, filling 8,000 cars. And that number will increase. Uh, we expect to have around 50 stations, again, together with our partners in the country by the end or early next year. And then, uh, with it's like a little bit like a rocket where you have stage one and stage two. Next stage will be H2 Mobility where we want to go to 100 stations in the next two to three years. You just mentioned the goal of having 50 stations up and running. Now that goal was already set for the end of 2015 and has been kind of moved forward to the end of, of this year. Um, will you reach it by the end of this year? It might be a little bit later. It might be a little bit later. I think at the end of the day for the consumers, uh, it's not so much a half a year or a year earlier or later. It's really uh, to get that infrastructure, uh, to get good, reliable stations to them, and to have those stations in the right places. And this is the typical hen or the egg question. What has to come first, the fuel cell car or the place to fill the fuel cell car? So when you talk about private passenger cars, uh, you definitely need the infrastructure first. You need a base coverage. Uh, we think in this country it's around 100 stations. In the UK we think it's around 70. In Japan around 100. In California between 60 and 70 stations. Uh, of course fewer stations in smaller countries. But that's the kind of number we think is necessary. And uh, when you look at this country we have committed to build those first 100 stations no matter how many or how few cars there are. After that, of course, we have to look at the number of cars. So in the second phase uh, we'll build stations as cars come. And the more cars there come, uh, the more stations we'll build. Is that an advantage that the battery-powered electric car has over a fuel cell car that I can just plug in my own garage? I think in the early days, probably yes, uh, if you have a garage. But many of those battery cars are built for urban environments and many people who live in high-rise buildings don't have a garage. So that's... Um, that's a bit of a contradiction, but people will find ways to solve it. Um, when, you look at, when you look at larger fleets, uh, when we do the numbers, uh, we are very, very much convinced that uh, one hydrogen station that can fill dozens and hundreds of cars a day will be more efficient and will be more customer friendly uh, than dozens and hundreds of public charging stations. So even if you don't have 50 stations up and running quite yet, there are a few. Is there anything that you say um, that you have learned along the way that you say, okay, now we know how to tackle uh, setting up more stations, maybe also at a higher speed? Uh, it's, it's a learning at many, at, at many different pathways. One is what we've learned is that the station has to be as small as possible uh, because, because real estate, especially in urban areas, comes at a premium. And we're competing with other, with other fueling, uh, f uh, fueling stations. We're competing with a car wash. Uh, we're competing with the with uh, square feet footage for the, for the shop. So it's, it's really about real estate prices. So build those stations as small as possible. The next one is um, 
we have to build performance stations. Uh, because in the early years, there were stations that could fill five cars a day. That's nice if you only have two cars in the city. But if you go up to 10, 20, 50, 100 cars a day, uh, you need high performance stations. And still, at the same time, very small stations. And you can see in the background some of the Linde stations and technologies that make sure that you can do that. Another thing which we've learned is that uh, you really have to be very, very energy efficient at the station. Uh, because hookup power, uh, you need to be in a very small, in a very small bandwidth. Uh, if you go beyond that, uh, the station owner needs to buy an additional transformer, which again is 50 to 100,000 euros and would drive up cost. So these are some of the factors we have learned. Uh, what we've also learned is that uh, whenever you are working in a city where the authorities have already approved two or three of those stations, they find it much easier to go for the next one. Whenever you go to a city where you haven't done it before, uh, it's a bit more tedious and it takes a little bit more of, of discussion with the authorities to get approval. But is it easier to install or integrate a hydrogen filling pump at a petrol station, at an existing petrol station? Or is it easier to set one up on its own? Um, I think setting it up would be easier uh, if you do it on your own. But then where do you get the customers from? And our, uh, what we see in many countries is that customers who have a car today, they are used to go uh, to a branded oil station. That's where they expect uh, high quality high quality fuel that's where they expect the convenience store which is important for many of the customers that's where they expect cleanliness and also safety but if i have a hydrogen powered car i wouldn't go to a fuel station for petrol i mean obviously i'd go to a fuel station where i can get my hydrogen to fill my tank but if you get the hydrogen at the at the conventional station why not go there you can wash your car you can vacuum clean your car and you can get a couple of chocolate bars and there's always a bit of a question, um, is it battery electric or fuel cell? Or is it battery electric and fuel cell? Where, what's your stance on that issue? We think it'll be both. Um, we think if you drive short distance, if you drive in an urban area, uh, if you have a relatively small car, a battery car can make sense for you. Uh, if you want to go longer distance, if you want or if you need a bigger car because you have a family or because you, uh, you're a salesperson who has to travel long distance, uh, we, think, uh, we think the hydrogen car will be the better alternative. So we'll see different segments.